Frizzy Grizzly's Gift Tammy and Aunt Mary were busy making cupcakes in the kitchen when Max walked in. Yummy cupcakes, exclaimed Max. Don't you touch those cupcakes. We've made them for Grandma, shouted Tammy. Grandma? Are we going to see Grandma? Can I hold the cakes while we go to see Grandma, Aunt Mary? Asked Max excitedly. Yes, sure, Max. That's very helpful of you, replied Aunt Mary. They drove to Grandma's house in Aunt Mary's swanky red car. It was a long way off, and while Tammy enjoyed the scenery from the front seat, Max sat at the back and enjoyed the cupcakes one by one. There was one last cupcake left in the box, and Max got nervous. He had to think of something to give Grandma. Aunt Mary, can we stop over and buy apples for Grandma? Asked Max. She likes apples a lot. Yes, sure, Max. That's very nice of you, replied Aunt Mary. They stopped over at a fruit cellar and then continued on to Grandma's house. Soon they arrived and Tammy couldn't wait to give Grandma the cupcakes she made. But she was surprised. Max, you ate all Grandma's cupcakes, you, you naughty boy, <laughs> exclaimed Tammy. They were so delicious, replied Max, licking his lips. Max, Tammy, I remember a story I have to tell you. Once upon a time, in a town of bears, lived Frizzy Grizzly. His grandmother had hurt her leg and she was not able to move. So he decided to visit her with some goodies. Since Grandma loves honey buns, I shall bake some for her, he thought. So he baked some yummy honey buns for his grandma. Mmm, they smell so good, he said to himself. Frizzy's mouth started watering and he wanted to eat some, but he stopped himself. No, 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 these are for Grandma. I shouldn't eat them, he mumbled. Now his grandmother's house was a long way off. After walking for a while, he decided to sit under a tree to rest. He was hungry too. These honey buns look yummy. I'll eat just one, he said. He ate one and then another. Before he realized it, the whole basket was empty. Oh no, I have eaten all the buns. What will I give Grandma now? Asked Frizzy worriedly. He was upset with himself. I have to take something for Grandma. He looked around and realized that he was sitting under an apple tree. He was thrilled as this was Grandma's favorite fruit. He plucked some juicy ripe apples and filled his basket. Then he walked off to Grandma's house. Hello, Grandma, greeted Frizzy. Hello, Frizzy, welcomed his Grandma. I have got juicy apples for you, Grandma, said Frizzy. That is so sweet of you, my dear, exclaimed Grandma. But I really wanted to bring you your favorite honey buns. Frizzy blurted out meekly. Don't worry, my dear. I'm bored of all those honey buns that people have given me. Apples, too, are my favorite, said Frizzy's grandma with pleasure. Frizzy was so glad that at last he could bring her something that she liked. He also knew that grandma would like anything that he gave her, as she loved him dearly. So, you see, Max and Tammy, Grandma would love anything you give, even if it's a little flower, said Aunt Mary. Tammy walked up ahead and picked the most colorful flowers she could see. Grandma was so happy with the apples and the flowers. <laughs> Once upon a time in a little village named Locke, there were two children. Max and Tammy. Max and Tammy lived in a little cottage by the side of a beautiful blue lake. Now every week on Monday, which was market day in the town of Markey, Max and Tammy would go and do their shopping. On Monday, as usual, Max peeped out of his window before they could leave for Markey. What a fine morning it is to go shopping. Yes, it is. Looking out at the sky, too. 
They went in to get ready when all of a sudden they heard the rumble of thunder. Ooh, it's cold. What is that? asked Tammy, looking suspiciously at Max. That's surely not my stomach. Then they heard the sound of thunder again. It came from outside the window. Oh, I hope it's not going to rain and spoil our shopping trip. Oh no, I hope not. I've been looking forward to this trip. Come on, let's hurry before it starts raining, coaxed Tammy to cheer up Max. Bing, bing, Tammy bing, and Max bing, got into their bing. little red car and drove to Market in a hurry. The town of Marky was over the hills and far away, so it would take them the full day before they returned home. Then, a little while later, the same sound of thunder was heard. A gigantic head appeared out of the lake. It was a monster. The monster wriggled out of the lake and sat on the shore. Oh, I'm so hungry. And my tummy is rumbling. I need to find breakfast soon. He started to look around and spotted a house nearby. Yippee! This roof will do just fine as my breakfast. He roared with his husky voice. He licked the roof with his long, Yummy. rough tongue. The monster said and started eating the roof of Max and Tammy's house. The monster ate half the roof and patted his stomach. My stomach is full, but I can't resist the remaining part of the roof. So, he sat and ate the remaining part of the roof. That was indeed delicious, said the monster, satisfied at last. When Max and Tammy returned home that evening, uh. they were surprised to see their house without a roof. Oh my, our roof has disappeared. How did that happen? There must have been a terrible storm while we were away. I'm sure I heard the rumble of thunder this morning. That's what must have happened. It's too late to start repairing the roof now. Let's start the work early tomorrow morning. Let's go to Aunt Mary's house and get a tent for ourselves, said Tammy. Aunt Mary's house wasn't very far away, so they returned quickly and put up a tent. Then they lit a campfire and sat in front of it. Hey, Tammy, let me play all the tunes I know on my guitar trying to make the best of the situation and started playing. Hey, that sounds wonderful, Tammy said and joined Max by clapping and singing along. They played music and sang for quite some time till they dozed off to sleep. Now, in the lake nearby, the monster was struggling with a tummy ache after having eaten the full roof. <sighs> oh, oh, my tummy hurts. I'm never going to overeat again, however delicious it may taste, cried the monster uh. in pain. The next morning, Max and Tammy started to mend the roof. Seeing the two <sighs> children working hard, the monster mm. felt sad for them. The monster then decided to secretly help Max and Tammy. While they went to have their lunch at Aunt Mary's house, the monster <laughs> built the entire roof in a flash. Max and Tammy returned home <gasps> to see the roof of their house magically mended. <laughs> they were surprised, and that's when they noticed a slip stuck on the door of their house which read, I'm sorry for the roof. Hope you like the way I fixed it. Your friend, M. Whoa. Oh. Max and Tammy were extremely <laughs> happy, seeing the kind gesture of Mr. M. But they kept guessing who it could be, but couldn't. After a while, they heard the same thunder sound once again. <gasps> Guess who made that sound? Yes, you're right. It was the monster again. But this time, he was ooh, dancing ooh, ooh. in happiness. <laughs> Yay! It was the Saturday after Christmas, and Max and Tammy went for a sleepover to Aunt Mary's house. By late evening, Max couldn't sleep, so Aunt Mary sat by their side as they lay in bed. Aunt Mary, can you read us this book I got for Christmas? Yes, sure. She started reading the story. Once upon a time, there were three pigs. They lived in a small cottage. 
Now, in the neighborhood close by lived Mr. Wolf. He always tried to catch them for food. One day, the three pigs were walking to market when Mr. Wolf came running by but didn't even notice them. That's strange. He didn't even notice us. It is very, very strange indeed. He seems to be in some sort of hurry. Let's follow him. So out of curiosity, the three pigs followed Mr. Wolf. The first pig ran fast and then stopped suddenly, nearly throwing the other two pigs off their feet. They peeped out from a corner to see him waiting at the bus stop. Oh, perhaps he is going away and he will never bother us again. <sighs> I hope so, but this is very, very strange indeed. I don't think so. Look, there's another wolf getting down from the bus. <sighs> Hello, sister. I hope the travel was pleasant. It was his sister, oh. Miss Wolf, who had come to visit him. Oh, yes, it was. Her sharp teeth gleaming under the sunlight. She looks very fierce. Look at her teeth oh. and claws. She must be strong as well. She looks fine to me. Shall I go over and say hello to her? Oh, no, you will do no such thing. Giving the second pig a knock on the head. Oh. Let's go home before they eat us up for dinner. The second pig nearly fell down. The thought of them as dinner scared the three of them, and they ran home in fear nearly tumbling over one another. They were out of breath by the time they reached home. If they both attack us, what do we do? We will need to think of a plan to stay alive. The pigs thought and thought. Hmm. Oh, come here. I have a plan. They spoke about the plan and agreed to try it out. That's a great plan. And was quite sure the plan would work out well. The next morning, the three pigs went to Mr. Wolf's cottage. Mr. Wolf came out and was surprised to see his prey at the door. Today is my lucky day, exclaimed Mr. Wolf, his face gleaming with joy. Who is it, brother? Mr. Wolf was about to grab the three pigs when Miss Wolf appeared at the door. W wait, these flowers are for you, Sister Wolf. For me? Why, thank you. These are the most beautiful flowers. You are a guest in this town, so we hope you have an enjoyable stay. Trying to shake paws with Miss Wolf, but instead caught her sharp nails. These chocolates are for you, sister. Handing out some yummy chocolates to Miss Wolf. How sweet! And this basket of fruits? It's for you and your brother, Miss Wolf. Thank you, thank you so much. Nobody has ever made me feel so welcome anywhere. Mm. The next no, day, Ms. No, Wolf went to the pig's cottage no. with her brother. Come on, brother. It's time you help my new friends. Wow. Oh, no. She made Mr. Wolf do all the chores for the three pigs. He mended the roof, painted the fence, <laughs> and even mowed the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> it's my way of saying thank you to my sweet, kind, and charming friends. Their plan worked. Now the wicked wolf would never again think of attacking the pigs. His sister's generous friends, the pigs, lived happily and without fear. <laughs> On a fine Sunday morning, in a land far away, lived two children, Max and Tammy. The boy and girl were playing on a swing in the garden outside their house. They were both waiting for their favorite aunt, Mary. They had made this plan of going for a picnic with her almost a month back. And now, finally, the day had arrived. They were so engrossed in their play that when they heard a loud beep, they got startled. It was Aunt Mary in her flashy yellow car. Aunt Mary! Aunt, Aunt Mary! They shouted in excitement. Can we go for the picnic now? Yes, let's go for a picnic, children. 
Yippee! We're going to have so much fun! Jumping up with joy. But where are we going? You know, when I was about the same age as yours, I used to go to Rumble Tumble Hill for a picnic. Rumble Tumble Hill? Where is it? And why do they call it Rumble Tumble Hill? Does it rumble like Max's stomach? Oh no! Come, let's find it for ourselves. Both Max and Tammy were <laughs> overjoyed as they zoomed off in their aunt's car all the way to Rumble Tumble Hill. They soon reached the foot of the hill. Then they climbed up the lush green hill until they reached the top. There were bushes everywhere. Aunt Mary walked to a clearing. Look here, children, a perfect spot for keeping our goodies. Spotting a place where there was a bench. Goodies? Oh no, we forgot to carry the picnic goodies. Don't you worry, children, here it is, ta-da! Showing the backpack as if by magic. She carried the backpack all the mm. way to the top of the hill. Oh, Aunt, you think of everything. Aunt Mary opened the backpack and gave the children sandwiches. Hey, this is our favorite sandwich. Not just that, I have a surprise for you guys as well. Both the children looked on curiously as Aunt Mary took out a huge dark chocolate cake from her bag. This is the biggest chocolate cake I have ever seen. Aunt Mary was very happy that they liked the goodies. Great! Now all we need is a cup of hot tea, she said, digging into her bag for a matchbox. Where could the matchbox have gone? I'm sure I put it in my bag. Max and Tammy tried being helpful. Don't worry, Aunt Mary. We know how to light a fire. We just need a few sticks. The children gathered a few sticks on the ground. Max rubbed the sticks against each other. He blew so hard that it made Tammy cough. <coughs> then suddenly, the sticks shook. Tammy, Tammy, did you see that? The sticks, they shook. Of course, they will shake if you blow so hard. Then the ground below their feet shook. Tammy, did you hear that rumble? And it's surely not my stomach. The rumbling grew louder, and out of the bushes jumped a fierce-looking dragon. Max and Tammy held on tightly to Aunt Mary's hands. She was not surprised at all. In fact, she was happy to see the dragon. She consoled the children. Don't be afraid. He is a friendly dragon. He won't harm you. The dragon roared loudly and with its fire lit the sticks on the ground. Then Aunt Mary kept the pot of water on the burning sticks. The dragon purred as he drank tea with them. Max and Tammy looked on in surprise. They could not believe that a dragon would be so friendly. He even burped loudly when he finished. <coughs> then, seeing the cake in Aunt Mary's hand, he came closer, shaking his tail in happiness. Would you like to have cake? The dragon's mouth started watering. He came to sniff Tammy's plate. Oh no, you are not eating my cake. Max gave his cake to the dragon. The dragon swallowed it in one gulp and disappeared into the bushes. He came back again with some shiny stones and gave them to the children. It looks like the dragon likes you too. The children returned home happily, admiring their <laughs> gifts given by their new friend. Max came home from school angry as ever. Why don't people listen to me? Max, come here. Let me tell you the story of Lucy the Goose. Once upon a time, at a beautiful farm on a hill, lived Farmer Bill and his wife Linda. Mm. <laughs> One day, Bill and Linda planned to go to town, but were worried about leaving Lucy, their pet goose, alone. 
Lucy the Goose was Linda's pet, but she was also the most chaotic and arrogant of all the animals on the farm. I know what we need to do, said Linda. Hey, Lucy, we're off to town and you are in charge of the farm. Me? In charge? Lucy was instantly proud. She went to a hillock and screamed. Listen, I am in charge now. I need to make sure that everything moves fine around here. Minnie and all, march into your shed. Who are you to tell us what to do? Don't you know I am in charge for the day? Ha! Huh. Why should we listen to a silly goose? Mumbled Minnie. Then she went to Pen, the hen. Chop the firewood and stack them up in a neat pile. Make it quick. Who are you to order me? I am the boss for the day. You have to listen to me. I can't stand such arrogance. I am not going to chop the firewood. Lucy could not get any of the chores done. She sat on the rock, confused and sad. Just then, a squirrel came up to her. Listen, Lucy, uh, this is not the way to get work done. You have to be a role model and well-mannered. What do you mean? Stop being silly and tell them politely. I am sure things will work out. Lucy decided to give it a try, so she went to Dyke, the donkey. Hello, Dyke, greeted Lucy politely. Good morning, Lucy. This milk needs to be taken to the market. Will you do it, please? Sure, Lucy, I will help you. As Lucy was respectful, they all listened to her. And the farm was spick and span. When Linda and Bill came back, they were very happy to see the farm in order. They noticed the change in Lucy, who was now polite, and all the farm animals liked her. The next day, Max returned from school happy. He had the monitor's badge on his shirt. Mom, Mom, guess what? I was made the class monitor today and everyone listened to me because I was polite, Max said. But I will not listen to you, said Tammy as she walked in. And they all started laughing. Long, long ago, near the town of Markey, there was another little town named Kidsville. The town of Kidsville was looked after by kids and their pets. Yay! Yes, kids. Max and Tammy lived in the town of Kidsville. They had a pet crane whom they adopted. The children found him by the seaside when he was very small and weak. They looked after the crane and named him Sylvester. Max and Tammy lived in a house by the side of a huge clock tower. There was a big round clock at the very top which never stopped ticking. and always showed the most accurate time. Since Max and Tammy lived by its side, the regular winding of the clock was their responsibility. Aha! Way! A year passed and Tammy, Max, and Sylvester would climb up and wind the clock. The clock worked like magic. It chimed every hour on the dot. Then um, one day, uh, Max looked at his watch. Our clock is always on time. It chimes on the dot of each hour. But that isn't my problem. Problem? You have a problem. But Max didn't answer, and Tammy was silent. After an hour, the clock struck 11, and it could be heard aloud in Kidsville. Max looked at his watch. Always on time, as usual. But that isn't the problem. What is the problem? Shouted Sylvester, quite confused now. Mm -mm. 
Max looked at Sylvester oh. and his watch. He took out his watch and put it on Sylvester's leg. He said, Oh, Sylvester, I no longer have a problem with the clock, thanks to you. I'm going to my village house tomorrow, and I have you to wind the tower clock. Sylvester was caught by surprise. And before he could open his beak to speak, Max handed over the key to the clock. How am I going to get to the top of the tower and wind the clock? <laughs> Sylvester was the coolest crane in town. But now he was worried. His friends wanted to speak to him, but he walked away mumbling. Soon it was daybreak and time to wind the clock. Sylvester walked to the town hall looking very worried. His friends, who were already Ooh. there, tried Ooh. to speak to him, but he asked Ooh. them to be quiet. I need a ladder. Uh. No, no, no. The tower is too high. I need two ladders. Ooh. Sylvester's friends tried to speak to him again. <clears throat> oh, don't bother me. I have work to do. Sylvester mumbled again. He tied uh. the two ladders with a rope. Uh. Then he put the huge ladder against the tower, but it was not tall enough. Oh no, this isn't high enough. What do I do? Sylvester put his head down in shame, for it would be the first time that the clock was going to stop, and it was because of him. Then one of his friends said, Oh, you silly crane. Max asked you to wind the clock because he knows you had a watch, and you can fly up to the tower. Aha! In all his worry, Sylvester forgot he could fly up to the top of the tower and wind the clock. <laughs> Sylvester realized that he needed to stay calm and think clearly to get a task done. Ooh. <laughs> Summer holidays had begun. Tammy and Max played in their garden the whole day as usual. Oh, how boring it is. I wish we could go somewhere nice. Oh, how I wish we could too. The next moment, they heard a familiar car horn. <gasps> Max and Tammy turned around to see Aunt Mary in her swanky red car. She waved out to them as she came near. Hey children, who wants to come to my house for a sleepover? We will roast marshmallows and tell stories. Me, me, the children shouted out in chorus. They packed their night clothes and storybooks and quickly jumped into Aunt Mary's swanky red car, ready to go to her house. They enjoyed roasting and eating marshmallows, and soon it was time to sleep. Aunt Mary, I cannot sleep. Can you tell us a story? asked Max. Sure, Max, replied Aunt Mary. In fact, I have a good bedtime story to read to you, too. Aunt Mary pulled a chair close to their bed as the children propped themselves up, excited to hear the story. Aunt Mary began reading. Emmy's Big Toe Once upon a time, in the town of Locke, there was a big zoo. The zoo was home to a number of animals that came from different, far-off places. The animals lived together as one big, happy family in the zoo. Among the animals in the zoo was Emmy the elephant. She loved playing football and would call all her animal friends to play with her. She even called Doris the deer, who recently arrived at the zoo to play with her. The game started and Emmy dodged the ball twice around Monty, the monkey, and scooped it over to Rita, the rhino, and kicked the ball so hard that she hurt her big toe. Ouch! She cried, trying to hold her toe but tumbled down instead. What happened, Emmy? 
asked Pretty, the mommy bear who was watching. I hurt my toe and it pains. Ouch! cried Emmy. All the animals in the zoo heard of Emmy's fall and felt sorry for her. Pretty gave her a pile of toasts with honey and even called the vet. The vet arrived at the zoo. He checked Emmy's big toe and pulled out a huge plaster from his bag. He put the plaster for Emmy's foot and left. Now Emmy could not walk. She sat on the ground and cried. Oh no! How will I get my breakfast? Now I cannot walk around the zoo. What do I do? She cried. The animals felt sorry for her. Just then, her best friend Joey the giraffe walked by. He saw Emmy's plight. Emmy had always shared her vegetables with him and now he wanted to help her. Stop whining. I will get you some help, he assured her. Joey called all the animals around and together they gathered all the pieces of wood they could find. They then tied all the wood onto a trolley that the zookeeper used. Emmy saw the huge trolley and was happy. Now she would be able to move around in the zoo until her toe healed. Yay! shouted the animals when they saw Emmy sitting on the trolley, while Rita, the rhino, and Heather, the hippo, pushed her around. All the animals were happy, especially Joey, for he was able to help his good and generous friend. It was a cool summer evening, and Auntie Mary had come to visit Max and Tammy. Hey, children, isn't it a beautiful night to go camping? Camping? At night? Yes, camping and <laughs> stargazing, she replied. Aunt Mary brought along her tent, so the children helped her set it up. That evening, they slept on the grassy floor outside their tent and looked up at the stars in the sky. Max, said Aunt Mary, pointing to a bright star. Can you see that big red star? That is Mars. Wow! When I become big, I am going to go to Mars. As they looked at the stars above, Max soon fell asleep. <laughs> While in dreamland, Tammy was busy packing her books. Hurry up, Max. Carry your sleeping bag quickly. Just then, Uncle Ben came in. Oh, everything is in order. It's time you left. <sighs> he said, huffing and puffing. The two brave astronauts walked to their big silver rocket as they waved out to Uncle Ben. Max and Tammy strapped themselves to their seats. All engines checked. Starting countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! They both shouted. The two brave little astronauts shot off to Mars in their shiny silver rocket. A few minutes later, they were in space heading towards Mars. Look there, Tammy. That's Mars. Let us prepare for landing. Roger that. They landed on Mars and looked out through their little window. Wow, we're here at last. This is so exciting. Come on, let's explore Mars. The two little astronauts wore their heavy spacesuits and walked all over the surface of Mars, leaving huge footprints with their enormous space boots. Then Max whizzed off in a space buggy while Tammy gathered a bucket full of sand and rocks.
They looked around, but there was no one to be seen. Then suddenly they heard a loud growl. Tammy quickly hid behind a huge rock. Hide, Max, hide. There seems to be a space animal here. But Max stood and laughed. <laughs> That's no animal. That's my stomach. I am hungry. They went back to the rocket, and as they floated, they ate all the delicious goodies they brought with them to Mars. Then Max looked at his watch. It's time we go back. Let me plant a flag to prove that we were here on Mars. As Tammy got busy carrying the rocks into the rocket. Come on, it's time to go home. Uncle Ben will be waiting for us. They got back into their spaceship, and with a blast, it took off. They zoomed back to Earth and splashed down safely into the sea. We're back from Mars, shouted Tammy with joy, waving a flag. Hey, where did you get that flag? Yelled out Max, catching Tammy's hand. Some careless person left it on Mars. Leave my hand, Max. Max, 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 get up, leave my hand shouted Tammy. Max got up with a start to see Tammy <laughs> shouting and Aunt Mary laughing heartily at the two. 